Hi, this is Ameya from scaleof42.com. Uh, thank you very much for joining me on, um, for this uh, webinar on, uh, uh, on how to identify and attract your ideal customer personas. Um, we are extremely excited to bring this to you. Again, as always, uh, it's absolutely our pleasure to come up with the information that uh, we believe could help our community. Uh, Scale Up 42 is um, a web development and uh, marketing strategy company. Um, we help our clients to build a very robust, resilient strategy to make sure that their businesses are doing well, uh, especially when things that are happening nowadays uh, with COVID, we are we are here to support our, our clients and anybody, in fact, who would like to, who, who are persistent and who, have, who are passionate about their businesses. We are here to uh, support any business in any possible way. Um, I will share our um, contact information at the end of the presentation and um, we would be uh, very, very happy to assist you in any possible way that we can uh, to support your business. Uh, so scaleup42.com um, has um, developed a brand called Scale Up Naturopath, and this particular brand helps naturopathic doctors and clinic owners to, um, to build a very strong customer base and enable them with all kinds of tools that they would need to uh, to mark to to market to the new customers, get new customers in the door, or um, build a very strong strategy that allows them to maintain their customers and grow the value of their customers that they already have uh, developed. So, without any further ado, let's dive into today's presentation. So, today we're talking, like I said, we're talking about customer. Uh, personas and how to identify the right persona and attract the ideal persona and attract them to you. But before we could actually uh, do that, we need to first understand what kinds of different personas um, interact with uh, a particular business um, or, or a practitioner. So at the forefront of of actually diving into a strategy before as a as a prequel to getting into a strategy what is important is to understand what the customer persona is and in short the customer persona customer segmentation um, customer persona can be identified by doing customer segmentation and in short what customer segmentation is all about is basically looking at your entire customer base and and breaking it down into different into small groups um, with some calculated assumptions and predictions uh, of what these groups and how these groups impact a particular business now we have been doing this for a very long time and whenever we have asked our clients or the business owners many times we most business owners would say uh, when we ask them what their customer persona or customer segments look like what what does a customer look like most cust most of our clients would say hey our, we serve everybody and anybody can come anybody can walk into the door and if they are looking for what we are selling and they have the money we will we'll sell it to them and that is okay, anybody, if, if whoever comes and finds you and buys from you, it's great. That said, it is not something that is the most strategic way of going about identifying and, and, and acquiring the customers that you would like to acquire. So, and the basic of that is everybody cannot be the customer. There is, there is a basic difference between people. For example, in a very simplest and the most broadest way, there are male and there is female. So there are men and women who buy from you. And that's at a very basic level, that is the difference that we can come up with. But above, over and above that, we have different kinds of people in the cat male category or in, in female category, people with different kinds of interests, ideas, 
the way they react to certain needs, the way they make buying decisions, the way they are um, looking for uh, a certain things to buy, uh, the way they um, react to, a, to pricing and how they are looking at certain um, offers or promotions. So everyone is, is different. And, and how these different personalities impact one's business is, um, is something that, that we're gonna talk about today. Um, and the fact is that every business owner should be able to look at their customer base and should be able to identify these nuances and these differences to make sure that they are um, they're driving their business in the right way and they are catering to the needs of different kinds of customers uh, in, in the way it should. Uh, in basically, when it comes to segmenting these customers, there are, the answer usually is how do you go about segmenting the customers it, it totally depends on um, what the business type is and what the business's goals are uh, that said there are some commonalities or there are some common features that every customer would would have and those at a very high level at a very broad level you could see that there are these are the five different ways that uh, the customers can be uh, can be divided uh, at a very broad level. So you have geographic uh, segmentation, demographic, behavioral, technographic, and psych uh, psychographic. Geographic is whether you live in a city or you live in a small town. So if you live in a city, what are your behaviors? What could be um, your, you know, how are you going about doing business? What is, what are the different forces of your surroundings that impact you, your, um, how you make buying decisions. Uh, for instance, if you live in a small town and you drive, you could go as far as 10, 20 kilometers to, um, to see a doctor maybe, or a practitioner that you're comfortable with. But when it comes to living in a city and with the sheer density of population and availability of resources, you might choose to find somebody who is closest to you. Um, then you have um, demographic differences or demographic view of segmenting based on age, gender, uh, household income, education level, financial literacy, uh, and so on and so forth. And behavioral segmentation happens when you try to understand what a particular customer segments behaviors are what kind what drives their behavior are they price conscious or are they quality conscious are they looking at um, long-term use or a short-term use of a certain product um, what kinds of questions do they ask what what kind of information are they seeking uh, over maybe over the internet or uh, when they're asking certain questions, what kind of information are they seeking about your product or service? Uh, technographic simply means what kind of technology uh, is somebody using? Are they comfortable using a phone when they are making their buying decisions or someone likes to sit in front of the computer uh, at the luxury of their home and, um, and, and, browse for information to get more knowledge or simply watch TV or listen to radio while they're driving and consume that information to know more about what's out there for them to buy. And then there's a psychographic information where what are the psychological um, um, behaviors that, that a certain consumer would um, uh, would show uh, when making a buying decision. So all these different, um, now some people, they're demographic, behavioral, geographic, to a certain extent, even psych psychographic ways of analyzing a customer has been out there. It's been practiced for a long time. Technographic now with, with media channels in, increasing with, with, uh, uh, the invention of new devices, 
this is another complexity that has been added. Um, what you will realize is that when, as we move ahead in the presentation, that a customer persona is not just somebody that we look at these five different um, ways of segmenting customers and silos, but there will be several overlaps as well. The question, however, that one should ask as a business owner or a practitioner is, is how to segment my customers or how to segment my patients. And the reason why it is important to ask these questions is not only are the customers unique, and these customers' behaviors and customers' buying patterns unique, unique, but your business is also very unique. Uh, you have the flavor of your brand image, your personality, um, the colors that you like, the way you like to communicate with your patients, the kind of rapport you would like to build, or for that matter, lack of rapport that you would like to, mm, to build to make sure that you have the different the, the 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 sort of distance between a patient and a practitioner or um, um, the kind of service that you would like to provide so it all depends on what your customer segmentation would look like would totally depend on your business goals as well as who you are as a business owner what is the unique flavor of your business and how you would be um, and how you communicate with the patients or your customers. Uh, here I've listed a few questions that you must ask yourself before embarking on um, the journey of customer segmentation and identifying the kind of persona, customer personas that you're looking for. Because not just that your customer segmentation methodology uh, and your way of attracting these customers depend on um, your on on these questions but this is also means this also means how your your business is going to move uh, from this point to some point in the future what would be the flavor of your business gonna what's the flavor of your business gonna be like what kind of profitability you're going to be looking at what kind of growth opportunities you're going to be looking at so you when you when you're looking at the customer segmentation you have to first ask the business goals the questions of what your business goals are and then embark on the journey of segmenting your customers um, for um, the sake of this presentation now there are Different questions require you to ask to do segmentation in different manner, but our goal for this presentation is to identify the ideal customers and how to attract them. So we are looking at a, a small case where we are looking at the goal of acquiring new customers. So the very first step is defining your customer persona. Um, an example of a customer persona could be um, as I have mentioned over here, um, it depends on what kind of business and service you are offering. For example, one of my clients, one of Scale of 42 clients is, um, uh, is a naturopath who provides uh, her services to mainly to women who work in the financial district of Toronto. Uh, they are mainly between the age of 30 and 40. They are married, they have kids, um, they are, their household income perhaps is over $200,000. If you are making 100,000 and your husband is making maybe 100 or more. Um, so they are working in the financial district. They live in upscale neighborhoods. Um, their interests are in finance. They like to have. Uh, they like to brand, shop at uh, uh, an upscale with upscale shopping brands. Maybe they drive Tesla, which is an expensive car. Um, usually, they are on their phone, uh, so they have a subscription to financial sites and maybe some fashion sites. So this is the kind of a persona that we might be painting for uh, some um, for a particular client that this. The goal is to acquire 
more people like this persona that has been described over here. So one of the things that we also would do then is identifying what this person persona, what this customer segment means to you. Um, now, every customer segment is different as we have already discussed. What, how do you, how does that, how, how does that difference or those differences um, impact your business? And the most important formula or a metric uh, that has been used by businesses and, um, um, and marketing uh, professionals is the customer lifetime value, or in this case, patient lifetime value, meaning it is the it is the prediction of the net profit attributed to the entire future relationship with the customer. So from the day the customer is acquired, how much profit had would this particular person can you predict would create for your business? Based on that information, it provides you great insights in terms of how much money maybe that you need to put in to acquire this kind of customer versus if let's say there is another kind of persona that does not um, provide that kind of profitability to the business. That persona may be somebody who is a student and they are mainly um, looking for some help related to their stress due to studies but they're also very dependent either on their parents or very limited benefits that they might have, the insurance that they might have signed up for through school, but they're not going to be as profitable uh, as, as somebody who is, um, who is well-established and makes decent amount of money and has maybe has some work benefits to support their needs. So if you're looking and comparing two different personas, Knowing what the profit, the number of visits is one such metric within this metric that you can look at if a customer comes, if a persona A, your desired persona comes say 10 times and every time they come, they are making you a profit of $100. So you know that this customer persona is the value that they create for you as soon as you acquire them you are going to make $1,000 in profit margins because of this or gross margins and because of this uh, persona. And then you have another persona, say persona B, and they are probably only going to come five times a year and they are going to make only $50 uh, uh, in, in profits because they choose different services to buy from you then you know that they are probably and they're they're only worth $250 now what we are not suggesting that one person is worth serving and other is not what we are saying or what we are what we are what we are trying to get at is understanding these values would help you to understand how to go about um, building your business around different personas. Uh, so knowing the number of times a particular customer would come um, and buy from you and the kind of profitability they create for you allows you to understand how much money you might have to invest in acquiring those customers and how often uh, they, that would also help you to understand how big the market is. Um, maybe there are not as many people who buy Teslas in the world as compared to the number of people who might buy Honda Civics or Toyota Corollas. Uh, so you know that fundamentally there is a difference between the total number of such customers available out there in the market. And if you're looking for that customer, then the kind of effort that you will have to make that is something that this particular metric would also allow you to identify the kind of effort that we that you have to make in acquiring that customer the amount of money that you will have to put in your marketing campaigns to acquire that customer the type of media channels that you will have to choose 
to send these ads so that they are aware of uh, you in the marketplace. That actually brings us to the, the next step, and that's identifying the channel of your customer acquisition. Now, in the previous video, we had spoken about the AIDA model of marketing. Now, the AIDA model of marketing is, is the awareness, interest, decision, and action model. Uh, to quickly go over this, awareness is when somebody finds out that you exist um, and they have the need of a service that you may be offering or they might have become aware that they're looking for um, uh, that they, they have become aware of there is a certain need that they have or the problem that they're facing and now they're looking for a solution and from the research they found that I may have to see a naturopath. So now they've become aware of the problem and maybe aware of a solution. Now they want to know what, what kind of, where they want to know who is out there, who's, who's offering the solution that they have identified would solve their problem. And then, so they have to now come, now they have to become aware of you as a service provider, as a practitioner who can, solve their problem and it's not just you that there that is out there there would be your competitors who would be looking who would be out there as well so they have now started they have become aware of their problem they uh, um, they have become aware of you they find your information more interesting uh, and maybe another competitor or two who's interesting, who, whose information is interesting to them. And now they have to make a decision between two or more options. And once that option they have decided, okay, they have, they're going to decide that they are going, going with you, they make the buying decision. So at this point in time, what would your awareness campaign look like? What would be when they are, this particular persona is, is, uh, is looking for information what kind of information should you put out there in that awareness phase, um, knowing the behaviors of this customer? Like if this customer is somebody who looks for quality and looks for reviews, looks for uh, maybe even um, uh, information, the quality of information that you're putting out there, maybe the amount of blogs that you've written, your Instagram feed, how it looks like, and so on and so forth. Um, you need to, uh, you know, what that customer would be wanting in their service provider, because now you have studied that customer in, in the previous two, st two steps. Um, you, this is the different way of showing the same exact funnel that you saw on the previous slide. Uh, it's an awareness consideration. Consideration is again when they're choosing between you and um, uh, they're considering whether in fact you are the right person or not. And if they do decide that they are, that you are the right, you could be the right, one of the right people who can serve them, then it's the consideration is between you and your competitor. And then the information that you're putting out there uh, the blog, the reviews, maybe social media information that you've done, um, they will then, they will decide whether they are going to, uh, so these are the channels of acquisition and you will have to then pick the right channel of acquisition depending on who they are. Maybe somebody who is interested in buying um, very high quality items may not put, may not search for websites like Kijiji or some used in, um, um, or some used car websites of where people are going out there to buy, make economical buying decisions. They are, if your chosen persona is somebody who goes after quality and pays premium, then you have to choose the right websites or the right channels to, um, to put your ads out there as well. So it is very important to choose the right channels at the right stage of Right, at the right buying stage as well. So these are the combination of thoughts that you have to keep in mind to make sure that you're choosing the right acquisition channels as well. And finally, when you start doing these advertising, you have to ensure that you're monitoring 
how these different acquisition channels are working for you. Uh, you may realize that Facebook ads are getting you more, um, more views on your website, but Google ads are the ones who are actually converting um, the, uh, the people who are getting onto your, onto your site from Google ads are converting and making booking an appointment with you or buying something from you versus people who are coming from Facebook ads who are just coming in and browsing on your website, but they're not really buying much from you. Um, or maybe the way you have built your search engine um, ranking by doing a lot of writing of blogs and doing a lot of SEO, uh, which is a very broad term, but let's say you have got the right partner or the right media agency, marketing agency who has done that for you, then maybe somebody just type in certain keywords and your, your organic result, your website came up as an organic re result and they were able, they came to your site, they bought something from you and, uh, and, and they came to your site and then they decided to buy from you. So there are different channels that will either get you views or they would get you views and some clicks on your site or they would get you views and some clicks and converting those visitors into your customers. And you have to keep an eye on that and you have to understand how much money you're spending on that. Maybe a channel is doing is, is converting a lot of customers, but it's getting very expensive as well. So you have to keep an eye on the budget as well. So when you are running these campaigns, you have to also keep an eye on what, how these, these customers or these website visitors, or audience are coming to your site and what they're doing to make sure that you are putting the right um, content out there. So these are the four steps and in summary, I would say that one of the most important things, like all the steps that we discussed, um, we start with listing your business goals. So first list your business goals. Based on those business goals, you will know what your customer persona would look like. Uh, drill down into that customer persona, get to know as much about that person as possible. If these clients are already buying things from you or coming to you for um, their needs, ask them questions of how they found you, what was their research methodology, why they bought from you, why they chose not to buy from your competitor, and as many questions as possible to get to know their behaviors. When you get to know their behaviors, you will be able, you'll be able to understand what motivated them to get to you. Uh, you would know what your financials look like if you are if you have done your client value analysis. And based on that, you know how much money or how much profits a particular customer segment would make for you. Based on that, you can put that put the right amount towards your marketing spend. You will be able to identify the right channels and based on the marketing spend and the channels, you will know exactly how much you would need to invest in getting new customers like these. And over a period of time, you keep on monitoring and optimizing your marketing campaigns, putting out new content out there. Um, you will be, I'm sure that you will be able to achieve great, great success. Um, that is it from our end today. Thank you very much. And uh, here is our contact information in case uh, you would like to have a conversation or a coffee. Let us know. And um, we'd be very, very happy to have a chat. Thank you very much and have a very nice day. Thank you.